The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you're asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? And they replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit, Amen. I love this time of year. The fall days and ours have been pretty modest so far and mild. It's as if there's something coming to an end, but at the same time there is something to look forward to that lies ahead. In many ways that's the way I feel about my life these days. Something is coming to an end and something mysterious that I don't know what it is lies ahead. In fact, I think that's the way that folks at the Church of the Ascension are feeling these days as well. Something's coming to an end and something lies ahead that's not exactly clear but which holds some promise. And that's why these days the gospel readings that we're hearing are so very powerful and important for us. Because over and over again, Jesus is speaking to his disciples about what will happen after he's gone. He has charged them to become his body after the resurrection. They are to be the ones to carry on his work. They are to reflect him in the way they lead their lives. The, the moment that we're at, of course, is that moment after he has already told them that they're going to Jerusalem and that he'll be put to death and rise again. So we can imagine them walking along on the road on their way to Jerusalem. And what they know is that there's going to be tragedy ahead. But they also know that beyond the tragedy, there lies some promise. It's not a promise that they're clear about or what it means, but they know there is some promise. For Jesus, he knows what the promise is. For Jesus, he knows that the victory that he will win is the ultimate victory. So for him, the battle is won. There is, 
there is nothing ahead after the suffering except victory. And that's the that's the context in which he is addressing them these days. You remember when they were first told that he was going to die, that they were going to be put in charge, as it were, of, of his work. They, they had an argument along the way about who was the greatest, who would be the leader for them. And Jesus says to them, hey, wait, the victory is won. It has nothing to do with who the leader is. It has nothing to do with who's the greatest. It has to do with accepting the victory. So relax. Let's stop arguing about who's the greatest because it doesn't matter. Because, in fact, the greatest is the least. And then you'll recall that last week he has this rich person who comes up to him and says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And you remember that he says, yes, I've done all those commandments. And Jesus says to him, well, all you have to do is sell all your possessions and give them to the poor. Because the victory is already won. The victory of eternal life, the, the gift of the kingdom of God is already at hand. It's God's victory. It's not your victory. There's nothing you can do about it. Doesn't matter if you've kept all those commandments. Doesn't really matter whether you're going to sell all those possessions or not because God provides the victory. And you can live into that victory right now. Now, by the time we get to this week's gospel reading, we have James and John. And they have figured out that, well, we're not supposed to argue about who's the greatest in this life. But he says there's going to be some life later. So maybe we could lobby him to be able to sit on his right hand and his left hand uh, later on in the kingdom. It's the same, it's the same issue that they had two weeks ago arguing about who's the greatest. And Jesus almost laughs at them. He says, would you please relax? There's nothing you can do. In fact, there's nothing I can do to tell you who's going to be sitting at my right or at my left. The fact is, that is God's to decide. It's God's infinite grace and God's infinite freedom. So, in that sense, the victory is won. All you have to do is relax and live into the victory. And that means, stop arguing about who's greatest. That means, Stop worrying about how many possessions you can own. Stop worrying about how many commandments you can uh, keep, how many prayers you can say, how many acts of, of magnificent generosity you can do. Relax. Be humble. Give your things away love one another, and be humble as you lead your life. Because those who are last will be first. And maybe those who are first will be last. He calls them in these days as they begin to approach Jerusalem to a simplicity of life, to a to putting aside their egos and their possessions and to simply accept the grace of the new life that God is giving them. Don't be anxious about your life. 
about what you shall eat or what you shall drink. God will provide. That's what he's saying to them. Even as they face the cross, don't be anxious. Don't try and argue with one another about greatness or about power or about possessions or about the victory is already won. It's just ours to receive. And we receive it only when we humble ourselves, only when we exercise some humility about our own importance and understand that it is all God's grace, only God's grace that matters. Brothers and sisters, those disciples, those disciples are us because all of us have anxiety about what the future holds. All of us have some fears what could happen. But to, to us, Jesus says, don't worry. Live humbly, patiently. Don't be bound up by power or possessions. And wait and accept the grace that God pours upon you. And if you have a task, it is simply to open your eyes to that grace. And then, then model your life in the best way that you can to receive it fully. That is the eternal life that I promise you. That is the eternal life that God gives you today.